when we came here, the rains were very reliable and the dams would overflow to the point that you could boogie board it from the mate stream coming out of them. Fish would swim across our paddocks. Wow. We catch them with nets sometimes. <laughs> um, but each year that's gone, it's got slightly warmer. So the earth's getting hotter and drier. This farm's drying out, there's no doubt. One of the things that um, I read just recently is in 2019, the United Nations declared um, that we only had one generation time frame left mm. of farmable land on the planet. Yeah. Thankfully, the earth is pretty incredible. <laughs> it uh, it can is. rebound if we create the conditions for it. So this example over here is a new planting and Simone helped me here. Yeah. And so at every um, maybe 500, there's a different type of cash crop. And one cash crop will be immediate for example, papayas in six or eight months. They're hiding in the grass at the moment. Uh, the next one will be 1.5 years. We'll be getting bananas off there. This whole system is designed to feed itself. And I've sprayed all of your microbes all over this. That's why it's looking so green. Yes. And look at the rest <laughs> of it. You see the oh difference? Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> you see here, I've got irrigation going under the under there? Yeah. You put your hand in there. What do you tell me? Oh my God, it's dripping. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like you just hosed it. Yeah. So and that, you haven't. That might have been a week ago that we put them on. So <laughs> it's still wet, isn't it? It is absolutely. I just, it just feels like you've just hosed it. Yeah. So there's a great test they do when they go out and try and re-educate these um, old redneck farmers. They have a, a moisture test with a bunch of uh, containers with different soil types in it. And they'll pour a glass of water on each one. And they'll see the one that's healthy and has got plenty of roots and um, worms and microbes in it. Um, soil penet uh, penetra uh, water penetrates through it in double time. And the soils that they dug out, dug out of the farmer's paddock to show him, the soil sitting on top, the water sitting on top like that, and taking forever. In mm. fact, some of them aren't even percolating. Mm. It's a per called a percolation test. Mm. They, their answer to that problem is like a, a dog chasing its tail. They then think we've got to rip and till and plough again to decom for decompaction. To break it up, yeah. And it's this endless vicious cycle that they've locked themselves into. It's killing worms kills the microbes when they get exposed and um, it bakes the soil out and you lose all the moisture. It's the worst thing you can possibly do. So we've got to find a, a better way. A lot of the weeds have medicines. They do. You can actually eat a lot of them. They do. Well that's a good point and a lot of um, reason farmers are hooked on Roundup is that they think their fields have to be perfectly clean and they're scared that weeds will compete with their their produce or their their trees. There was a study by a Canadian scientist um, who found that natural forests communicate with each other and actually trade nutrients. What these weeds are doing is helping cycle minerals in the soil. So I don't I might cut them once a year when I lay hay down. But I let these weeds go because they're encouraging life under that mulch there. If you deleted them all, there's nothing going on. And so these little plants, some of these weeds I've knocked back, you know, dozens of times and they just keep growing back. I, that's exactly what I want because it's mimicking a natural system. So this is an example of a new form of agriculture called Syntropic and it comes from Brazil designed by a man called Ernst Gotch. So he studied the way that forests are multi-layered and one plant will have its day and come through the pioneer plants and reach the sun. 
mm. and there's multi levels um, of each species mm. and they all come in their own time and he harnessed this system in a totally commercial and profitable way. So he designed commercial rows and he put symbiotic species together that worked really well. And he had his citrus, as I'll have, and the bananas to, for the biomass. Mm. But what he did was introduce all sorts of um, trees like eucalypts, Australian eucalypts, because they act like a big straw down to the groundwater and they bring it back up. What I used to have was enormous water flow across this field. And he used to flow down into that dam yep. and overflow it and run off down into the creek yep. next door. But I figured that if I did these north-south rows and you know along the land here, mm. then I'd stop all this water loss. And I have. So even in the drought times, this is still green. Mm. Whereas before it was a hard clay pan that used to be grazed by sheep. Nature is far more clever than we, we will ever know. We've had third party testing, you know, in major universities around the world. And what they come back with is you've got 40% more protein per above ground green leaf. There's 40% more growth, more yield to the crop, or lush in a plant, or size in a flower. It's like, it's just, they seem to almost half again. Yeah. 70% saving on water, if used regularly. And of course it's 100% made in Australia with love. <laughs> <laughs> I love to hear it. Well, if we, we're certified organic here. Um, Gee, that cost you a bit. It did. But if we, and as we are, uh, if you weren't certified, we couldn't use it. Simple as that. And this is my, to me and many of my farmer friends, this is the future of farming right there. So see that field here, and look at that field over there. So it's, yeah, your is microbes that, have definitely had an impact. I can't understand why a farmer would not want this. Yeah. Anywhere in the world, why wouldn't you want this? Um, now that we're, science is becoming more aware of microbial life and the incredible complexity of it and they're now doing studies on carbon capture that um, microbial life is able to affect. That's right. And they're saying that even a, a healthy grass paddock can sequester hundreds of tonnes of carbon um, per eight, hectare. So as opposed to a soil that's open and no life in it and has been tilled to death. So it's till and kill or go on to working with nature instead of against it. So we till it just once and then we form up the, row, the tree rows and plant these forever food forests in it. Yeah. And thankfully, uh, this is the last time I will ever till this soil. This will be the last time we use that tractor. And you're gonna put that tractor out to pasture? The tractor will go in the <laughs> shed so it slows down the rust. Yeah. But, you know, very rarely come out. <laughs> Only for the grandkids. <laughs> yeah, give them a ride. Give them a ride. I have one um, even organic colleague, a big 400 acre farm, and he has to borrow 200K a year just to replant. They're trapped in this deadly cycle of chemicals and tilling and you know, exposing the soil to the hot sun again, over and over and over again, because they're in the ag, industrial ag system. So I guess it's easy for little farms like us to make the change, but there's some big brave ones are. We've got to look at all the arrows in the quiver to fight this drying out process, this climate change, which um, does seem to be happening, whether man-made or natural, it doesn't really matter to me, it's happening. Hmm. So these syntropic rows that you're seeing behind me and in front of us is a, a, an ad, adaptation strategy. And I believe we have no choice. We've got to do something or we're going to lose a lot. We're just going to see food shortages in the future. And this system here is 100% protecting the soil from blowing away, I from know. drying out, you know, And all these people degrading. who are now starting to invest in these massive greenhouses, you don't even need to do that. No. Don't no. even go there, guys. Yeah. Just, you know, put the microbes in there, do your covers, get it sorted. Yeah.
So these are pumpkins that have grown on Rowan's uh, microbes. And this pumpkin field is uh, coming to an end, but we have been picking for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And we sell a couple of hundred kilos a week at the markets on the weekend. And there's just no end to it. This, the, the production, the productivity in the field was astounding. These eggplants are a year old, would you believe? They're just finished now, it's over, but uh, a typical eggplant crop is four months Jeez. and it's finished. And we've been picking for a year until they finished. What we've noticed time and time again is, is customers coming back to us telling us that since they've used earth food for such a short time, or used the microbes, they've found that the soil is springier. You can actually put your hand on it and they actually yeah. spring. So there's a spring in it. There's, there's give in it. Whereas without the microbes, it's rock hard. Tilled soil bakes hard. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly true. They aerate the soil. They encourage root and fungal growth and um, water penetration. And you're mimicking a forest, really. And who, have you ever seen anyone uh, fertilise or irrigate a forest? We've never sprayed a chemical on this farm in eight years. And yet we're quite able to produce very nice produce, as you can see. Nothing wrong with it. And in fact, there's very little bug damage there. There are other guys are spraying it like Vietnam. So if I can do it, why can't everybody do it? The other thing we've noticed is since we've used the microbes, the resilience of the plant um, and its immunity system is stronger against bug attack. So normally around this time of year, the, the moths are starting again, mm. and we're seeing starting to see caterpillar damage. Um, we rarely see it. And with the exception of the occasional hole here and there, uh, the kale is in fine condition. Uh, it's great stuff, you know. I'm, I'm so thrilled. I, I love hearing these stories. I love hearing people's delight and joy and getting their hands dirty and getting food and, you know, not relying on anything that comes from a conglomerate because you don't know where it's been. Mother Nature has given us these microbes. That's her toolkit for repair. For herself, this is her own best health practice. Right. Um, by denying that microbial care in the soil is denying Mother Earth the opportunity to repair herself. Yeah, if we left it alone and we don't introduce these toxic chemicals that are designed to kill all of this, yeah. right? Uh, if we leave it alone, it'll work um, perfectly well for free. And this is the crazy thing, we, we are destroying the very system that feeds us that can provide all this stuff to us for free, with a little bit of effort, but you yeah. know. We've also now know that insects will attack a sick plant, so mm. if you're feeding fertiliser to a plant, it's actually becoming sick. It's like if I feed you a steroid, geez, you're going to look great, yeah. and then next year I'm going to have to give you more because you'll need more and then the year after, and you're gonna look great. You know, you're awesome. But eventually you'll die young. There's an artificial boost. Yeah, it's artificial. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's actually forcing the plant to uptake. Um, it's not a natural thing. Whereas yeah. if the microbes actually take what they need yeah, and they work with it for their own true. immunity, their own strength, they work with their roots. Um, so yeah, we know for a fact that insects will attack sick plants. It's just once you've inoculated it and it's, put, you know, it becomes self-sufficient. And the work and the labour and the inputs and the costs uh, just go down and down and down every year it goes on. But the return that you get from a system like that just keeps increasing with the maturity of the plants. And nature is far more clever than we will ever know.